anointing to remain in me so that this anointing can help me to res be restored or recover whatever it is that I have lost as a person. I want to say that as a Christian, number one step to recovering the anointing of God upon your life is by prayers. Going to God in prayers. The psalmist informed us in Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2. He says, whoever goes to the Lord in prayers will abide under the shadow of the Almighty and shall say what? The Lord is my refuge and my fortress. So, if you want to recover the anointing of God upon your life, in order to recover what has been taken away from you, you have to develop the idea of going to God in prayers. We can't do without prayers. It is in prayers that we receive direction from God. It is the prayer that God makes so many things clear to us. So we cannot do without it as children of God. So also I see what the cult people do. Now when they go to their own temple and consult their God and their master, I see it also as a form of prayer through a force. And when they go there, they get anointed. And when they come out and practice whatever has been told of them, they recover whatever they are after. So number one, prayers. Number two, the word of God being part of you. Psalm 119, verse 9. The psalmist asks the question, how can a young man or a young person keep his life right? He says it's by living according to the word of God. So this anointing can be gotten from reading the word of God. Another way you can get it is by fellowship. Fellowship with brethren. Fellowship with people you can gain knowledge from. In other words, this anointing that can help us to recover, it's such that when you remain in the atmosphere where God dwells, the anointing will remain in you. But if you move away from the presence of God, the anointing in you may die. May that not be a portion in Jesus' name. Let your head lack no oil. Oil your life, oil your head as a child of God with prayers with reading the word of God, with fellowshipping in the presence of God. With this, you will see that you will not lack the oil of life. Now, we know the importance of oil to hair, especially we, the women. There are some of us that every morning before we leave the house, we oil our hair, true of us. We oil the hair so that the hair, we keep retaining the nice texture. It will also be glittering. It will retain the softness. And it will be arranged however we want it to be arranged. That's how important oil is to the head. And that's how important prayers, meditation, word of God, fellowship is to a child of God. So sustain the anointing by remaining daily in the presence of God. You can't do without God, child of God. This was what I told my husband some weeks ago. He was complaining of business being down, being down, being down. And truly, I observed that it was true. And that every evening when he returns, what he will say is that, Umwe zihana zuna hea. Madama zihana zuna hea. Business and umwala. So, that was his usual complaint. Business and wala. That means he was experiencing lack through a force. Something had gone away. And it touched me seriously. I said, uh uh. When we were doing this business with 50,000, 100,000, when we didn't have at that time, something was coming in. Business was interesting then. 50,000, 100,000, somebody was making good profit. But now that the capital has risen, it's now you're telling me, no way Zihana is not here. No way Zihana is not here. I said, this is serious. So on examination, you find out that, hey, something has 
had been taken away. Canker worm has destroyed. The economy has been eaten up by canker worm. And there's need for restoration. And I, I, I noticed that this thing is no longer a joke. It has started affecting the sleep of this man. You know, when somebody near you or close to you is uncomfortable, you too, you become uncomfortable. On a banaka like this, it became a matter of concern. And I called him, I said, see you, there's nothing we can do. There is nothing we can do. We don't have anywhere we're going to borrow money from. We don't even know what we are going to do about it. That the best thing, and that's the only thing we can do, is to resort to prayers. And I was I told him that it's time for us to start praying. And God so kind, the message came to me. And the message came through a priest. I attended one program. And after the ministration there, the priest said the message was given to him that give this woman this pack of candle. And I was called. I came and received the pack of candle. I said, take this candle, madam. When you reach home, give it to your husband. Tell your husband to be praying with this candle every afternoon. Let him end the prayer with angelus and commit this business into the hands of God. Wow! Was that not anointing for me? That was anointing. Was that not the oil on the head? That was an oil on the head. Hey! And the man of God said, after that program, go straight to the shop and pray with it. From that program, instead of me going home, I reversed my car. I drove down to my three. When my husband saw me in the shop, he said, eh, or the Kwanama, or the Kwanama. I said, or the Nama. So, I told him why I was there. I said, ah, eji kwakando. So, we, I told him that this is why I came. This is what the scandal is for. And I'm going to wait here because it was a morning program. I'm going to wait here till when it's almost close to 12. We'll begin this prayer and end it. Brethren, I want to tell you that that was how we kept on praying. And to summarize the whole thing, the supernatural break true that we experienced in our business last week and this week was something else and i believed that the god of 11 tower has risen to restore all that the canker one has stolen and so it shall be for you in jesus name yeah. that he marveled me that prayer that we had not even said up to a month that I had to call uh, okay i didn't even call on saturdays i don't usually come around here so I asked my daughter that stay in the shop to please help me and buy the things we will use and cook on Sunday. She does that every Saturday. But on Saturday, in the morning she left. Around 10, 11, she called me and said, Mommy, are you in the house? I said, no, I'm not in the house. He said, uh, please, why I'm calling you now is because I will not be able to enter the market today to buy the food items. I said, why? He said, mom, is because we are so busy in the shop that I cannot leave the shop to go and buy something. You can call my sister to go to market. Wherever she is, let her go and buy those things. I said, eh? You're so busy that you cannot go. I will go. I'm not calling any sister. I will go. I, I told the person I was in his house, I am leaving. I am going to the market. I am going to buy the things myself. I drove to a nearby market. I bought the things by myself. I went home by myself. I, I didn't have to call anybody. Wow! What am I saying? That the way we can recover this anointing as children of God is let us resort to prayer. Let us resort to reading and believing the word of God and claiming this word of God for ourselves. Let us resort to meditation. In meditation, God gives you direction. And when you receive that direction, it's like the oil of your life coming back unto you. Amen and amen. amen. We are talking about let your head lack no oil. Hey! And as youth, very active in life, not like some of us are already going down, but you, the youth, you are still 
very active. You still have a long way to go. Please, whatever advice somebody gives you on being active at this stage of your life, take the advice. When I was told that time will come in my life when I will not be desiring so many things, some things, I didn't believe it. But I want to tell you that it has started setting in small, small. There are things I no longer desire. They don't move me. Even if you want to offer them to me, I push them to my children. So I see it that going down in life is a natural thing. So when they tell you to wake up, wake up. The youthful age is something that is periodical from this time to this time. And after it is all over, you will yearn for those old ages. They can't come back again. So, if we are teaching, let your head lack no oil to youth, take it serious. If spiritually I've asked you to approach it as anointing on the head, I want to tell you that the second approach to this is see the oil on the head as wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. wisdom. Hmm. Let your head lack no oil so that you can get restoration. Gain wisdom. Open your Bible to Proverbs chapter 4. Let's read from verse 7 to 9. And see if there's something we can get there before we go on. Proverbs chapter 4. From verse 7 to 9. I read from Good News Bible. It says, getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. Whatever else you get, get insight. Let wisdom, uh, love wisdom, and she will make you great. Embrace her, and she will bring you honor. She will be your crowning glory. Everybody say wisdom. Some versions we say in that verse 7 that wisdom is the in thing. Wisdom in Igbo, they say, is amami here up here? Amami here. Amami he. Get it. Pursue it. Yearn for it. Desire it. And insist that it shall remain in your life. If you read Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 again, it says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And that was why I started by explaining this topic as anointing over our heads. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. What is wisdom? What is wisdom? I look at wisdom not just as acquisition of knowledge, not just as what you have upstairs, but wisdom as something that is greater than all those things. That when you say somebody is wise, it means that the person has a desire to attain something greater in life and also has designed approach to getting that thing. Then you look at that person as somebody that has the potential to acquire wisdom. Brothers and sisters, wisdom is a virtue. And every good virtue is pursued by those that know the value. Wisdom is a virtue. Now, if I say, see it as wisdom, I'm asking you to act in life with wisdom. Why do you need wisdom? We live in a world that, I will say, has become so cumbersome that to run the affairs of this world now requires great wisdom. You need wisdom to navigate this world. If you want to move around this world, you need wisdom. There are so many ups and downs. There are many new and old things. New ideas. And you need wisdom to be able to discern which to follow and which not to follow. Wisdom will enable you to know the business to venture into and the one not to venture into now. As youths, 
This is your stage of building up. This is your stage of acquisition. So, wisdom will guide you on what to go to and what not to go to. I think every wise person should be somebody that associates with God. That's why Solomon, being a beloved son of David, a chosen king, when he was asked to make a request, he requested for wisdom, and that wisdom was given to him. Because he understood what wisdom could do for him in life. Youths, young brothers, young sisters. It is wisdom that people are using to maneuver other persons, whether you like it or not. Even though the wrong ideas are getting more and more than the right ideas. That you hear that somebody has done you, why you? 419. Yahoo, Yahoo have taken all the money in your account. That Yahoo boy walked on you through wisdom. But it's nonsense wisdom anyway. It's not a wisdom to be admired. But then, we have to say it. That if we want to recover what has been taken from us in this crooked world now, men and women of God, we have to wise up. It's a common saying. Sometimes, if I'm passing somewhere, you hear young girls or young boys, they will say, oh boy, you need to wise up, oh. I think you hear it. Oh boy, you need to wise up, oh. Because wisdom is what people are using to manipulate I and you. Hey! A wise person is not a lazy person. A wise thinker is not a lazy person. That was why Jesus had to use this parable to teach us something. You know the parable of the shrewd servant. The parable of the dishonest servant. I think we know it. The servant that was a bad servant, the master noticed that he was a bad servant and prepared his mind to sack him. What the servant did was to use his crooked wisdom to meet all those that were owing the master and said, Whatever you're owing my master, reduce it. Reduce it. So that when the master asks him to leave the palace, he will have people that will welcome him in their own world. And Jesus said, if the men of this world can be wise like this, how much more the children of God? So I'm saying that wisdom is a virtue that we enable the oil on your head in this recent world to remain. Hey! If you study the contemporary world, the world in which we live now, you will know that Mumu, foolish person, will remain among the beggars in this world. But the wise ones will rise up and they will rule their world. Now, this wisdom I'm talking about, it's something that is expected of us to apply in all areas of life. Number one, in your career. I don't know what you do to earn a living, but what I want you to do is apply wisdom. Number two, in your business, yes. Even if you're a student and you study, yes. Anything, just name it, that you're doing. The wisdom is like the oil on your head. You need wisdom to survey prospects. Not whatever it is that somebody presents to you in this life. Now, you're welcome. Mm. Now, even at this present age, when we have heard it any, everywhere now that the less test things that Yahoo boys do now is not to kill anybody, but to take a very pressing substance from the ladies and you become a, non, a nobody again. You become a fool, you become a moron, you become a mumu. Even at this present world, so many ladies have not yet understood that that is the tactics of the present day Yahoo Plus. I think it's Yahoo Plus now. Yahoo Plus boys. And they still follow somebody that you don't know the source of that person's money. Wisdom will get you up. But lack of wisdom will sink you down. When the present world begins to use wisdom to approach things, 
you will become a useful youth and not a useless youth. A wise person is somebody that is smart. Let your head lack no oil. Means that in this contemporary world, you need to be smart. Smart people are the people that are excelling now. Not just hardworking people. Through or false. There are people that work hard from morning till night. But their head is still lacking oil. True or false. That is why the phone that is helping I and you now is called smartphone. I think smartphone. When you're having problem, they will just tell you, just get yourself a smartphone. Or somebody will see you and say, ah, why are you still using this phone? Get yourself a smartphone. The smartphone helps you to deal with so many issues in life because it's smart. So, my dear brothers and sisters, youths, young people, wisdom will enable you to play smart. I said, not so much of being hard working, hard working. Combine your hard work with smartness in life. A smart person is not a lazy person. Hmm. I encourage smartness in reasoning. Smartness upstairs rules the world. There are people that are just in one place, but they're very smart here, and they are seated there controlling I and you. Let your head lack no oil. I want to start from the attitude of some persons towards this program. Ekwe, let your head lack no oil. As they were coming, they were even coming as if Kaiga Barebu is a present in our house. Kaiga Barebu is a present in our I said, no. When the praise was going on, praise worship was so good. I was enjoying it. But at the time, I, I, there was a young lady that was sitting near me. I told the lady, it's time to move into the world. I think we have praise. It's time to move into the world. It was as if the spirit was one. Immediately, I heard the moderators take up the microphone. I say, yes, it is time to move into the world. I love what Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 3. When he told us from verse 1 that he is the word, the vine, the father is the vine dresser, that we are the branches. In verse 3, he made a statement. He said, you have been made whole by the word that you have heard. The word builds. The world makes you smart. How do you get this wet? Sometimes you do that by purposeful thinking. The people that are ruling this world now are people that think a lot, think well, constructively. Let your head lack no oil. Mm -mm. The best time to think, my dear brothers and sisters, most of the time, it's early in the morning. Early in the morning, you wake up in the morning and you begin to look into your day. What are my programs for today? You begin to conceive the approaches. Approaches that will do what? Approaches that will yield good results in all those things that you are programmed, you will do today. Even when you already have Maybe a permanent program. That every morning you wake up, you take your bath, you go to market. But you need to consider the way, the best way with wisdom on how to approach what you have been doing routinely every time. How best now can I approach it for fruitfulness? Let your head lack no oil. In that John chapter 15, Jesus said, any fruit that does, any branch that does not bear fruit will be cut off. Any head that lacks oil becomes unproductive. And if you're unproductive, the world will leave you behind and move on. Nobody is waiting for anybody. That's the life we live now. So, if you, have become, if you become unproductive, if you don't care about your status, if you don't care about your levels, people will leave you and move forward. Then, can he hear me? Every day, he be at church. People have left here and they're moving. 
Tori anaka, ini anaka, ichi nendo ozo no yanoku. Unyo obuna no yanaka. So, know it and know it now. And ask for ability, grace, to be able to conspire, to think, to reason, to think out. I've told you how you do it every morning when you wake up, probably after your daily meditation or in the early hours before you start your daily meditation. Look into your day. Look into your day. Look into your month. Look into your year. When you look into it, then be able to design the approach for fruitfulness so that you will not be cut off. Any branch that does not bear fruit will be cut off. As I say, apply it in every area of your life. Your youth, many of you need connections now to excel in your life. You need to think on how you can get that connection and make good use of it. Let your head lack no oil. Every opportunity that comes to you should be an opportunity to grab oil and oil your hair for the future. Last year, I buried my mother-in-law. May her soul rest in peace. And my brother-in-law is a priest. So at the wake keep, we had, I don't know, I, can't, I don't even know the number. He's a social person. So almost all the priests in uh, Oka Diocese, Ekuloba Diocese, they came for the wake keep. But somehow, you know, they had their, their phone. I think they like to be with their brothers. So after the wake up, after the break, they remained, they were eating, they were telling stories. Somehow, I got talking with one of them. I don't know how the, the conversation started. If you ask me now, I don't know. But at the end of the day, I noticed, and he introduced himself, I introduced myself. There is a professor, he's a reverend father, but he's a professor at uh, Unizik. And he got talking into so many things. And from there, we found out that we had ideas we could share. I'm a married woman. He is a priest of God. But we found out that we are ideas we could share together. I want to cut the whole story short that since that last year till today, we keep communicating. We keep sharing ideas. We keep building each other. Because of what? The ideas we share together. What I'm trying to announce to you is that in order for you to recover at this present age, brother, sister, you must be an exceptional person. You must have areas of exceptionability. Did I say something you heard? Hey, the world is so competitive now. You have to build up yourself to be exceptional in, at least even if it's one area, where people can consult you, where people can meet you, where you can be important. It's not all about money. Look into yourself. What do you think can draw people to you? Oh, will you complain? What do you think you have that can draw people to you? Even Jesus, people saw many things in him that made people to come to him through a force. And by people coming around him, it enabled Jesus to fulfill his mandate. It enabled him to accomplish uh, the, the reason why he came to this world. And when he was on the cross of Calvary, he could say, it is finished. Brother, sister, don't die without you being accomplished, without you being fulfilled. We have destinies to fulfill. Let your head lack no oil. We struggle for that. And the question is, what do I do? How do I gain this wisdom that this woman has been talking about? How can I help myself? I want to tell us that we can help ourselves get this wisdom. Of course, I've said, have fear of God in you. Desire this wisdom and pray for it. See, you see these three things that Jesus told us. I don't joke with it. He says, ask and you shall receive a thing. 
after asking, did he say stop there? Seek and you shall do what? Fine. Abba, to seek something requires a process. True or false? Asking can be something just vapor and it ends there. Please give me this. I've asked for it. But to seek it, it requires effort. And that's where the problem is. That which you desire, that which you aspire, that which you wish, how much have you sought it? How have you sought it? How? How did you seek it and you did not get it? Tell yourself the truth. Enemies here and there, enemies here and there. How much? How did you seek it? Tell me the steps. How have you approached it and you did not get the end result? Just tell me. If you get it then, then I will know that, hey, at the end, it's enemy. Then when you have sought it, it says, seek and you shall find. Then he now say, knock and it shall be open to you. Processes to getting breakthrough in life. Remember, we are talking about restoration, true or false? Remember that we want to be infilled again. Remember that we want to enter our realm of plenty where we don't lack. Then we need to ask. We need to seek. We need to knock so that the door will be opened because there are so many doors that we need to be opened in our lives again. The doors of progress. The doors of prosperity. The doors of marriage. The doors of business breakthrough. The doors who excel. The doors of good health. We need all of them to be opened. True or false? We need to do this. Then, after you have prayed, desired and prayed for wisdom, you study. You study. Brethren, no matter our level of education, we still need to be studying so that we will be able to be acquiring knowledge. You know, St. Paul had to tell the son, Timothy, study to make yourself approved, approved child of God, so that you don't perish for lack of knowledge, but you will prosper. Then, another thing that makes us to acquire wisdom is experience. Everybody say experience. We say that experience is a great teacher, thing. When it teaches you lesson, you will acquire wisdom on that thing. I want to say that you must not wait to experience something yourself. You can learn from another person's experience. So, in your areas of lack, those areas that you need restoration, who has experienced that kind of a thing? What's the experience like? What lesson have you learned from there? How do you think you can prevent that from happening to you? Learn from other people's experience and apply it in every day of your life. Then the fifth thing you will do if you want to get wisdom is apply every knowledge you have acquired. For this program to be very fruitful, any topic, any topic you get treated in your life, make sure that topic bears fruit. When it comes to that area, I'm a stubborn person. Oh boy, I know if you pay for something or make out time to attend a program, they, I, will, I will live with nothing. No way. No way. And I've tried to bring up my children in that area, such that when we attend program, and the program is progressing, this one will look at this one, this one will look at this one. And if we have not gotten anything, you see, we'll do hand like this. We are praying to God. We are praying to God that we may go home with something. Why do we say that? If we don't get anything out of that program, it's like a wasted time. Then, if the time has not been wasted that we have gotten something from this program, of what benefit is it to us? The benefit is that we will look and see that whatever knowledge I've gotten from this program, I apply it in the areas that I need to apply it so that the knowledge will bear fruit. What have I told you this evening? What have I told you this evening? Whatever it is I've told you as a person, I've told you as a person, I demand that you put it into practice. 
I'll be happy tomorrow if I see that you are a restored person. How will I know that you're restored? I will see improvement in your life. It may not be in your physical life only. It may even be in what is not seen. Why do I say that? Whenever what is not seen is improved in a person, gradually it radiates out and people see that something has changed within and that thing that has changed within has been seen outside. You must look restored and transformed after this program in Jesus' name. Then the third approach is look at the oil on the head as ideas. Everybody say ideas. Yes. When ideas begin to come to your head, you will be able to outgrow other persons. Idea came to David on how he could approach Goliath. And with that idea, he earned victory over it. Ideas. Ideas give people money now. Hey, let your head lack no oil. Anywhere you see yourself, please come up with ideas that will improve that place. And you'll be consulted for that. At the time in my department, I found out that on a, during or anybody's birthday, there will be text message everywhere, on WhatsApp everywhere. Then the idea came to my head that we can even make it more interesting. That on somebody's birthday, we just bring the person's poster, put it in the department. Anybody that will come into that department to that day will know that it is this person's birthday. Then we will just, hey... Towards one, between one and two, when we know the activity have started going down, we we'll gather together at that center and we celebrate. Anything the person offers us, we'll just relax ourselves before we get back to the office. The idea came. I sold the idea. They bought the idea. And sometimes, when you sell an idea and your idea is bought, the contract is given to you. Amen and amen. Let your head lack no oil. Therefore, on everybody's birthday, I am sure of bringing the drink, three of us. I am sure of bringing the water, three of us. I am sure of producing the poster, three of us. And with that, there's little income in my pocket. Let your head lack no oil. Yes! I've told you that this oil on the head Yes, take it as anointing of the Holy Spirit. Take it as wisdom to make you smarter. Take it as ideas to prove true. I said, the world is so competitive. If you don't have what you can outshine another person, you will be competing with the person. Mana, if you have something that will make you outshine the other person, the person will win you. That's why you can notice as a young girl that this boy is interested in me. And he's also interested in the other girl. And he's interested in the other girl. Equa, three people for one person. That will not be game, not game. What thing will happen? No be idea, na in go sell. Maybe, like one, 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 one brother, one young man told me one day, Sister, I'm confused on which of them to marry. I wish I were one of those girls. Or even me, me, so that I will shine. Leave matter. Because the Bible has said that we have been anointed with Holy Ghost and power. Therefore, there's Holy Spirit in me, Abby. And the Bible says that Holy Spirit will teach us all things. And that's why the apostles we are told. To wait on the open room until power comes on them. Until anointing comes on them. Anointing to do what? Anointing to excel in life. Which life? Every activity in my life make up my life. To excel in my business. To excel in my marriage. To excel in wherever it is. To be smart. The anointing will help me. I was just wishing... One of these girls But I said This marriage of a thing Let it be the person that will Decide All you, all you can do As 
a well wisher is to pray three of us, but the decision should be for those individuals. So I am saying this over and over as ideas. It is somebody that came up with this idea that hey, instead of going to an occasion, a real occasion, they will say, let the food remain in the cooler so that it will be hot until when it is item seven, refreshment, they start dishing out the food and food will be wasting time. And it has reached these people, it does not reach these people. Somebody came up with the idea, why don't we now design a bag that we have an inner lining that we keep food warm such that we can dish the food, put it in the bag, and keep it till it remains there. Once it's time to serve, the food goes round. And when the person shared the idea, the contract was given to the person. Sister, get us this bag. And it became a contract. And the team started giving food to the person. Let your head lack no oil. As you are, do you live only on people's ideas? How do you know if your head is lacking oil in that area? In this, your group, in the youth, in your family, where you are married to, what do they know you for? What has improved because of you? What has changed positively because of you? Please, my dear brethren, I want to beg us for positive ideas. Let no one be like Jonadab. In 2 Samuel chapter 13, Jonadab was a friend of Amnon, the, uh, the son of David. But Jonadab was a friend that had great, negative, destructive ideas. And that brought destruction in the house of David. But let the ideas be positive ones that will help, like that of Jonathan, that kept helping David all through his encounter and all through his ordeal with Saul. And those ideas kept David safe. Let your head lack no oil. And my dear brothers and sisters, with these three approaches, which I know that I need it, you need it, we shall surely get all that has been taken away from us restored. I want to thank the organizers of this program, even for the opportunity given to me to be part of it and prepare for this message. Because... The message has ministered to me. There is something that I have been postponing, postponing, postponing. But when I was reading about wisdom, that a wise person conspires ideas and begins to act on it immediately without bending it, it woke me up from my sleep and I had to go and pick up a project I suspended and acted on it. I'm very grateful that this program has also quickened me to come up with great ideas for my own promotion. So shall it be for you too in Jesus' name. Yeah. Open your Bible to Proverbs 13 verse 2 as we conclude. Proverbs 13 verse 2. In conclusion, my dear brothers and sisters, the writer of the Proverbs said something here. Okay, I wish somebody can read from King James Version where it is said that walk with the wise and you become wise. Then if you walk with foolish people, the Bible says that you will get yourself into trouble. Walk with wise and you will become wise. Walk with foolish people, you will get yourself into trouble. Please, that is what I'm concluding with. And I ask a question. Who is your friend? Who is your role model? Who is that person that you admire so much in life? Who are you associated with? Does the person have any oil on his or her head? Or is the person's head dry? Can you get anything positive from the person? Or what you have? may even be taken away from you. Just like some girls, that their association with some people have taken away their person, their person who they are, and they have subjected themselves 
to perpetual slavery. Let everybody wise up in this generation and learn to see that you don't become a nuisance to anybody around you, but let you become an asset to everybody that is around you. I want to say again, build up your ideas, that your ideas will make wealth for you. Your ideas will profit you. Your ideas will put food on your table. Your ideas will make people contract you. Your ideas will make people...